فريق انتر زي ما قلت لحضراتكم معانا كواليس ومعانا اخبار من ايطاليا هنروح لايطاليا مع صحفي بموقع جول العالمي علشان يطلعنا على ما هو جديد خاص معانا بالانتر وهو نيمار روزاري مستر نيمار ذا فاوندر اوف سيمبري انتر دوت كوم اند ذا جورناليست ات جول دوت كوم هلو هاي هاو يو ايم فاين ايفري ثينج از جود اتس ا بليجر to uh, having you on Al Ahli channel. Uh, at the beginning, I want to ask you about what happened between Inter Milan and Real Madrid. In Modric's case, we heard that uh, Real Madrid made a complaint against Inter. Is it true? Yes, uh, Real Madrid have uh, apparently filed a report against how Inter behaved, what they, what they perceive as um, behavior that, was, uh, uh, that, that, that violated the rules regarding players under contract. Yes. Um, however, however, Real Madrid have a very um, short memory because, uh, first of all, this is what happened between uh, Modric and Inter uh, was is, is very common practice in this in the transfer market uh, in, in the business. Uh, first of all, it was Luka Modric's agent who proposed the player to Inter and not the other way around. Mm. Secondly, Real Madrid should would do very wise to remember that this is exactly how they signed. Every single player they ever signed. This is how they signed Cristiano Ronaldo. This is mm. how they signed uh, Gareth Bale, and this is also how they signed uh, Ronaldo, the uh, Brazilian Ronaldo, back in 2002 from Inter. And this is how they signed Jose Mourinho in the summer in May 2010 from Inter. So it's just uh, it's just a case of uh, you know Real Madrid not you know not not like when the shoe is on the other foot. It's not as much, it's not as fun as it, as it is when it's, when you're on the receiving end of it. What do you think? What will happen by the end of this complaint? The FIFA will uh, will make a decision, or it will be like nothing. I think that if I mean, if we were to follow uh, everything, I mean, unless any new new, new evidence were, were to surface, I doubt something something would happen from this. Because as I said, this is common practice. Yes. Uh, in, in in the business, and but then again, this is Real Madrid. Real Madrid and Barcelona, we all know, have a very um, have a very special. Uh, position yes. in uh, FIFA, and you always have to put it in a very diplomatic way. But I, I, I struggle to see that anything could come out of this, unless, I mean, this is based on what we know today. If any new evidence were to come to light that FIFA had directly contacted Modric or something like that, that would be a completely different case. However, I doubt that seriously that that happened. Uh, excuse me, I will translate to the people and I'll be back to you. So, in the beginning, of course, there was a problem. We heard that Real Madrid was going to be a shock against the team Inter Milan because the team Inter Milan was going to be a shock against Luka Modric in a very strange way. He was going to be a shock against the team. I asked Mr. Nima about whether this is right or not. But he is the Wakil Modric who is the one who مودريتش على فريق انتر زي ما حصل مع رونالدو وكيل رونالدو هو اللي عرض رونالدو على يوفنتوس واتكلم كمان قلت له طب في الاخر انت شايف ايه اللي ممكن يحصل؟ هل ممكن الفيفا ياخد قرار ولا ممكن ما يكونش ما يحصلش اي حاجه؟ قال لي آه في يعني ما فيش دليل بيدين فريق انتر ميلان لكن في الاول وفي الاخر برشلونه وريال مدريد بيكون ليهم معامله خاصه من الفيفا وده طبعا اكيد كلنا عارفينه آه مستر نيما اي وونت تو اسك يو اباوت اولسو ا كومبلين Uh, that Inter Milan made a complaint against the president of the La, of the La Liga. Is it uh, because of the first thing that we talk about, about the complaint from Real Madrid? No, this is completely separate because uh, mm. the president of La Liga went out and said that, um, that basically uh, making a distinction, saying that uh, teams like Inter who have no money who are state-funded, you know, saying that Inter are, have the same financial situation as, for example, PSG is. I mean, PSG, as everyone knows, is, run, is owned and operated by Qatar. Yes, Qatar yes, state, yes. Much. Inter is not. Inter is owned uh, by Sunni, and Inter have followed, um, uh, ha have an agreement, a settlement, settlement agreement between uh, Inter and UEFA to follow the parameters set out in the financial fair play uh, rules to, to follow that. So, Inter, so what he said was completely unfounded and completely untrue. He was saying that, I don't, you know, he said, I don't know where Inter get their money from. They have no money. They yes, are backed yes. by a state. This, this is completely untrue. Sunni is a private com company. It's a Fortune 500 company. It's one of the richest companies in the world. It's one of the biggest companies in the world. And they, they, they're not allowed to pump in money into Inter freely because of several things. Number one being the Chinese government's restrictions on yes. non-essential uh, business areas. 
um, and football obviously not qualifying as such. And second of all, the mm. fact that NISA uh, have followed and applied uh, the, for the, the settlement agreements that they uh, struck with UEFA to be a, a self-sufficient club and have followed that to a T. So basically, NISA feel, you know, are suing him for um, defamatory and libelous statements, I would say. سالت على في نفس الوقت رئيس نادي انتر ميلان او نادي انتر ميلان عمل شكوى ضد رئيس رابطه الاسبانيه لا ليجا قلت له هل ده ليه علاقه بشكوى ريال مدريد لنادي انتر ميلان قال لي لا دي مخت... دي يعني منفصله بسبب ان رئيس الليجا اتكلم على انتر ميلان بطريقه فيها عدم احترام لميثاق التعاقدات اللي موجود قال ان فريق انتر ميلان ما عندوش فلوس موجوده في النادي يتعاقد بها مع لعيبه لكن بيتم ضخ اموال من الخارج علشان يتم التعاقد بها مع لاعبين ونجوم زي ما شفنا في الانتقالات الصيفيه وكمان بيفاوض لعيبه زي مودريتش فبالتالي ده امر مش سليم فريق انتر ميلان ماشي على مواثيق الفيفا وماشي على طبعا اللوائح اللي موجوده وضرب مثال بفريق باريس سان جيرمان اللي كان عنده مشكله مع الفيفا والفيفا اتفق معاه ان هو يصحح اوضاعه في الفتره القادمه بس نيما اي ويل اسك يو اباوت ايكاردي ايكاردي از باك اجين تو ذا ناشونال تيم سكواد اند ميسي از اوت Do you think Icardi will be the star of the national team in the coming days and will affect him with the Inter in the, in the Calcio? Well, um, I think now anything uh, Argentina's very poor dis display in the World Cup proves that they need to recalibrate and rebuild from scratch. Yes. Um, and I think one of those, you know, the players that they need to rebuild around are players like Mauro Icardi, Paolo Dybala, mm. La Taura Martinez, etc. I think the Higuains and the Messis are a little bit, you know, they, they've, they've all peaked and they need to be phased out. I think Mauro Icardi will be the number nine for Argentina, the starting number nine for Argentina for the next five, six years to come. Because the guy is he's a killer. He's an absolute killer. I mean, if you look at his statistics with, in terms of how many touches he has on the ball in the penalty area, how many shots yes. he gets away on goal and how many goals he scores, it's simply phenomenal. So, uh, I, obviously, um, I, I think he will be part of the Argentina setup. Now, will this have an effect on, on, his, on how he plays for Inter? It, it, it will most, almost certainly have an effect because, you know, traveling back and forth between South America and Europe um, does affect the players. Um, you know, Inter have been lucky to be able to have a, 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 a striker like Mauro Icardi completely to themselves without having... You know, having a very, it's been a very unique situation that they've been able to keep him at the training ground when the international breaks because this guy should have been called up long, long ago uh, to the national team, but he wasn't due to non-related football matters, we should put it in a more diplomatic way. سألت على وجود إيكاردي أو رجوع إيكاردي تاني إلى منتخب الأرجنتين وعدم وجود ميسي في الفترة القادمة وبالتالي إيكاردي هو هيكون نجم الشباك الأول وهل ممكن ده يأثر عليه بشكل إيجابي في فريق أنت قال لي إيكاردي واحد من المهاجمين المميزين جدا في أوروبا وكمان داخل منطقة الجزاء كان مظلوم أو ظلم أنه ما يكونش موجود مع منتخب الأرجنتين في بطولة كأس العالم لكن إيكارد أكيد يعني الأرجنتين محتاجة أن هي تعيد بناء منتخبها من أول وجديد بسبب الإخفاق, الإخفاق اللي حققوه في بطولة كأس العالم وبالتالي أكيد وجود إيكاردي مع المنتخب هيكيد هيأثر عليه بشكل إيجابي جدا سواء مع المنتخب أو مع نادي إنتر uh, Spalletti was happy about uh, the summer transfer window and, uh, and, and he spoke about that in the press and the news. Do you think that Spalletti made a good transfer window this season? I think Spalletti is extremely happy uh, with what happened mm. uh, in, the, in the summer. Uh, and he said so today, as you alluded to. Um, Inter, I mean, this is, this is without a shadow of a doubt the best transfer summer Inter have had since the summer of 2009. Yes. That now almost legendary summer of 2009 when they stole Ibrahimovic and replaced him with five, six players that were starting to starting line up and then they won the treble. Um, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is the best summer, you know, summer they've had simply because they've strengthened where they needed to strengthen and they have sold the players they needed to sell with, with the exception of João Mario. But having said that, the Spanish transfer window doesn't close until the 31st, you know, at the end of August. Um, so there's still, there's still a chance that he could lead uh, to, to go to Spain. Uh, but other than that, as Palissi, uh, as, as um, several Italian media have pointed out today, 
um, Spalletti has no more, you know, has no excuse because this summer he's literally been given everything he wanted and asked for this summer. Um, and so now it's up to him to get this team to blend, gel, uh, to play like a team and to del deliver the results. My, my, my second question is uh, a part of the first one. Do you think that Inter Milan can compete this season with Juventus? We, know, we all know that Juventus made a lot of transfer, yeah, tr transfer uh, summer this season, but you know that Ronaldo, of course, he's a, he's a huge player and he's a superstar, but do you think Inter can compete with Juventus this season to win the Serie A? I don't think any team can compete with Juventus to win the Serie A this season because Juventus have, I mean, this is a, Juventus is the side that's won the Serie A seven years in a row. Yeah. And they have strengthened in a way that few, few teams have, have the possibility and the ability to do. Um, yeah. I think for Inter, this is the first time Inter are in the Champions League for, for six years. Um, so it's, um, for Inter, it's about, you know, getting, you know, Finishing, you know, getting the routine in of finishing in the top four, top three, top two. Hmm. I think, I think, you know, teams the, the same way that Napoli and Roma now have yes. that routine. Um, for Inter, I, I mean, everything is possible, but I mean, anything other than Juventus winning the Serie A title for a record eight season in a row is, in my opinion and my my analysis, a huge upset um, because they they are the team to beat, no doubt. Um, and Inter have not been in this situation, uh, you know, have not been in the top two since 2011. Mm. That was almost, you know, like seven years ago. And these things, you know, that matters a lot. So I think for Inter, it's about, this, is, this season is about improving on the previous one. Yes. Uh, finishing maybe in the top three, going to the semi-final of the Coppa Italia. Three. To, so, right, uh, right. From the Champions League, yeah. Yeah, so Mr. Nima Rodzali, thank you so much for your time. And of course, we will have you again on the Ahli Channel. Thank you so much for your time. I'm uh, Mr. Nima Rodzali, of course, I'm a writer on the world's world and I'm a writer on the world's world. And the last question I asked is, do you think that the Inter is able to be 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 أو ينافس يوفنتوس، قال لي ما حدش يقدر ينافس يوفنتوس مش هنضحك على بعض، لكن انتر ميلان بيحاول ان هو يحقق موسم افضل من الموسم الماضي على الاقل يكون موجود مركز ثاني مركز ثالث في اخر فتره روما ونابولي هم اللي مستحوذين على الثاني والثالث وبالتالي فرصه كبيره لسباليتي بعد ما الاداره اعطته كل شيء واديته كل الصلاحيات ان هو يقدم موسم طيب مع عشان وقتنا بيجري مع حضراتكم عايزين سريعا نبدا الفيديوهات اللي موجوده معانا وابدا مع حضراتكم سريعا بلقاء السوبر الاوروبي اللي انتهى ما بين ريال مدريد واتلتيكو مدريد بمفاجاه بفوز اتلتيكو مدريد 4 2 اول لقاء لريال مدريد بدون رونالدو وبالتالي شفنا معنويات سلبيه على فريق ريال مدريد داخل الملعب عدم وجود رونالدو مش بس في مستوى ممكن ياثر مع فريق ريال مدريد لا احنا بنتكلم على عامل نفسي بنتكلم على قائد بنتكلم على واحد من افضل اللعيبه اللي جم في تاريخ العالم كلاعب كرة قدم، تعالوا نروح ونشوف اتلتيكو مدريد وفوزه 4-2 على ريال مدريد ونرجع نكمل مع حضرتك.